The idea behind ticker symbol U is simple. Connect the dots between advanced technologies and stock market data to highlight the best investment opportunities among the companies that are transforming our daily lives. I've greatly increased my own returns and lowered my stress by using data to drive my decisions about what investments to make and what content to create instead of going with my gut. Here's the thing. This week, ticker symbol U turns one year old, so I'd like to talk about an area of disruptive innovation that I don't cover very often, explain why I don't cover it, and then show you what I think is the best way to invest in this space. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. When you think about 3D printing, you're probably thinking about small, low-resolution home 3D printers. The thing is, 3D printing isn't about any one specific product. It's a process. It's about turning your vision into a reality one layer at a time. It doesn't matter how complex or precise or even strange the design. There are almost no limits when it comes to the materials that 3D printers can use. We explore how 3D printing could transform the food industry. Edible growth is about 3D printing with living organisms. And there are almost no limits when it comes to scale. In the future, I think we'll be able to 3D print an entire house. Not just a house, what about an entire 3D printed community that's laid out in advance like a 3D printed circuit board? That's a pretty exciting idea to me. Because there are almost no limits to the designs or the materials, there are almost no limits to the 3D printing process itself besides cost, time, and the human imagination. And for a long time, that's why 3D printing has captured my imagination as an engineer, as a passionate nerd, and as an investor. However, like I said earlier, capturing the imagination isn't the same thing as capturing returns. If I take a step back from my gut feelings and I just look at the data, it appears that 3D printing is not the investment opportunity I really want it to be. Let's consider the year-to-date stock price charts of four of my favorite pure play 3D printing companies, Desktop Metal, ticker symbol DM, Proto Labs, PRLB, Nano Dimension, NNDM, and Materialize, ticker symbol MTLS. I really believe these are strong 3D printing companies and serious innovators in the space, and they're all down at least 40% since the start of the year, while the S&P 500 has gained over 20% over that same time period. But wait a minute, doesn't that mean that these are great stocks that are trading at a steep discount, and now would be a great time to buy them? After all, they help make parts that can't be made any other way, and ARK Invest has literally hundreds of millions of dollars invested in these companies across multiple funds. Forget that, ARK Invest even has a fund dedicated to 3D printing. So how come I never talk about that fund on this channel? Let me explain. A little while ago, ARK Invest filed to create a Bitcoin exchange-traded fund called ARK B. That ETF's investment objective would be to track the performance of Bitcoin. So having this product would grant investors exposure to the price action of Bitcoin without the friction of buying Bitcoin directly. That's useful for sure, but there would be no trades for me to cover, so I wouldn't cover ARK B on this channel, right? Well, the same is true for ARK Invest's 3D printing fund, ticker symbol PRNT, or PRINT for short. PRINT seeks to provide investment results that closely correspond to the performance of the total 3D printing index, which is designed to track the price movements of the stocks involved in the 3D printing industry. It's a passively managed index fund that's rebalanced quarterly, so there are no daily trades or weight changes to track here. Just for clarity, here's what's inside ARK Invest's PRINT fund as of October 25th, 2021. The biggest holding is Hewlett Packard, ticker symbol HPQ, with about a 4.13% weighting in the fund. Nano Dimensions, ticker symbol NNDM, has almost the same weighting at 3.66%, even though it's the 21st biggest holding in the fund. Here are the four stocks that I mentioned earlier, Materialize, Proto Labs, Desktop Metal, and of course, Nano Dimension, and their respective positions inside the fund. It means nothing to be in the top 10 holdings of this fund since every holding has basically just one of three weights, 3.8-ish percent, 1.1-ish percent, or 0.1-ish percent. If you use an online service that tracks ARK Invest's combined positions, make sure that service does not include the holdings inside this 3D printing fund since it's not managed the same way as the other ARK funds. If you're one of my patrons on Patreon or channel members right here on YouTube who track ARK Invest's daily holdings via my online dashboards like the ones in this episode, you're all set because I don't count this fund. I made these visualizations of the print fund for this episode specifically. When I first started this channel a year ago, I told myself that I would never waste my time or yours, but mostly mine. 
One way I can do that is by using data to carefully choose what to cover in the first place. In my opinion, passive index funds aren't worth covering because no one is actually making investment decisions to maintain them, and those investment decisions are actually responsible for a significant portion of ARK Invest's outperformance of the market. One of my favorite sayings is, when in doubt, zoom out. Here's what I mean. If you look at ARK-K and ARK-G, ARK Invest's two biggest funds, they've returned hundreds of percentage points above the S&P 500 to shareholders over the last five years. Print has returned 76% over that same time period, which is definitely nothing to sneeze at, but the S&P 500 returned over 30% more than that. And that makes sense, because the goal of these kinds of index funds is not to give investors great returns. They're financial instruments that very closely track something specific in the markets. If you look at ARK-F, which only started trading less than three years ago, it still returned over 50% more than either of these indexes in only 60% of the time. That's the power of ARK Invest's research, stock picks, and active management, which is what caused me to make this channel in the first place. Great. That's enough about why I don't cover this passive 3D printing index fund. Let's talk about these cheap 3D printing stocks themselves. I strongly believe that 3D printing is going to be a core part of our future. My only question is when? Are we talking two years out? Five years out? A decade? In my opinion, the big risk of buying these stocks today is the opportunity cost or the risk that they could stay down and lock up our money in the process. That money could have been used to invest in Tesla or Palantir or any number of other big winners. So then what are the best investments you can make in the 3D printing space? For that, let's turn to ARK Invest's 2021 Big Ideas Report. There are three types of applications for 3D printing, prototypes, molds and tools, and end-use parts. When it comes to making prototypes, 3D printing has penetrated 40 to 50% of the market. So it's crossed that tipping point and reached mass adoption. The problem is that's only a $12.5 billion market, which is actually fairly small. 3D printing has just 4% market penetration in making molds and tools, which is more than twice as big of a market. The ultimate market for 3D printing is, of course, end-use parts that can be directly sold, which is more than 10 times bigger than the markets for prototypes and molds and tools put together. However, 3D printing has only penetrated 1% of this $490 billion market so far. ARK Invest also breaks down 3D printing applications by industry, and the biggest opportunities appear to be in space, aerospace, auto parts, and machinery. For things like drones, 3D printing unlocks parts and form factors that can't be made by any other process. ARK Invest estimates that drone hardware revenues will total around $100 billion by 2025. In Big Ideas reports from previous years, ARK Invest shared a case study where General Electric 3D printed parts for jet engines. By reducing the part count from 855 to just 12, these jet engine parts can be made twice as fast, have far fewer points of failure, and weigh 5% less. That weight reduction ends up lowering fuel burn by 20%, so it's a pretty big deal. All of that is super important for orbital and suborbital aerospace applications where failures are much harder to manage, not to mention that it still costs something like $2,500 per pound to get mass into space in the first place. All of this talk about space, planes, and drones is why I think the 3D printing fund is the second largest holding in ARKX, ARK Invest's newest actively managed fund themed around space exploration. These kinds of companies are the biggest beneficiaries of advances in 3D printing and where I would invest as a result. So let me give you some of my favorites. Rocket Lab, ticker symbol RKLB, completed their merger with the special purpose acquisition company Vector Acquisition in August. Rocket Lab is the leader in the small launch marketplace, with its Electron rocket carrying around 105 satellites to space since its first orbital launch just three years ago. So this is not a paper rocket company. These guys are flying. Rocket Lab's Electron rocket is powered by their almost entirely 3D printed engines, called the Rutherford engines, which is also the world's first battery powered rocket engine. This Rutherford engine is the first to use 3D printing for all of its primary components, including everything from its engine chamber to its pumps, main propellant valves, and injector. 3D printing has allowed Rocket Lab's team of engineers to manufacture an engine that is very lightweight, as well as greatly reduces the required build time just like ARK Invest research suggests. Although Rocket Lab's costs to launch mass into orbit are still much higher than SpaceX's today, they're currently working to make their Electron rockets reusable. 
Currently, their engine has the ability to be 3D printed in just a few days' time, making it much quicker for companies looking to launch small payloads into Earth's orbit on short timelines. When it comes to proving out the power of 3D printing for space launch vehicles, Rocket Lab is leading the pack. Next up, we have Joby Aviation, ticker symbol J-O-B-Y, which completed their merger with the SPAC reInvent Technology Partners this past August as well. Joby is an electric vertical takeoff and landing, or EVATOL, aircraft company that's aiming to revolutionize the emerging air taxi market. Uber is a big investor and partner of Joby. In a deal late last year, Uber raised its investment in Joby to $125 million and sold their air taxi enterprise called Uber Elevate to Joby as well. Of the major EVATOL players, Joby is one of the furthest along in terms of FAA certification for flightworthiness. Here's the thing, they're also the first organization in history to attempt certification of multiple safety critical structural titanium components made by 3D printing. One of the biggest obstacles to certifying safety critical parts that are made by additive manufacturing is that 3D printing is intended for prototyping, not the highly controlled production environment and file protection you need for passenger aircraft. To overcome this challenge, Joby partnered with Dassault Systems to develop an immutable file type similar to the kinds used in the financial technology space. This means that once a design file is exported, it can't be changed, which is an important part of maintaining certification. This file type also adds some advantages for the 3D printing laser technologies that Joby uses by providing extra controls and rules on how the laser actually moves while it's making parts. Joby's goal with this collaboration is to allow 3D printed parts to be more auditable in the present and have a file type that supports new requirements for FAA certification in the future. And that brings us to their partner in this effort, Dassault Systems, ticker symbol DSY, which is the maker of applications like SolidWorks and a number of other great pieces of software for 3D modeling, simulations, creating digital twins of products and production systems, and a lot more. I've used SOLIDWORKS throughout all of my time as an engineering student, and my personal experience is that Dassault is an awesome software company. That's actually one of their biggest moats. Engineers get trained on their software solutions early on in their careers and end up sticking with them. They have deep roots in the aviation space, but also support a wide variety of other manufacturing sectors as well as the life sciences and healthcare, which are two other industries that benefit from 3D printing. One of the most important benefits of 3D printing is that you can create highly complex geometries that aren't possible by other manufacturing processes, which means Dassault software packages need to be able to support these types of geometries and the various sets of instructions for the 3D printers that they interface with as well. And last but not least, we have the only SPAC on the list. Fast Radius is a cloud manufacturing and digital supply chain company that focuses on building infrastructure to design, make, and move things in the digital age. They have a software platform called the Cloud Manufacturing Platform that lets people design and get feedback on parts before getting them made. The software supports digital simulations of materials and structures as well as collaborative design. Once the design is finalized, you can store it inside a virtual warehouse where it waits to be ordered before it's made, meaning companies and individuals no longer need to store physical inventories. The part is made by 3D printing and only when it's demanded, not before. The parts are 3D printed at a fast radius micro factory, which are highly scalable units that act as factories in a box. Fast Radius is using 3D printing to solve the current problems associated with centralized mega factories, slow moving and easily disrupted supply chains, as well as the massive amount of space it takes to store physical goods, especially if they have many variants. Fast Radius is one of the SPACs that Palantir has invested in and has given access to their foundry platform. I think that Fast Radius will rely on Palantir to help with the optimization of everything from individual part designs to production to fulfillment. Fast Radius will be merging with ECP Environmental Growth Opportunities Corp, whose ticker symbol is ENNV, later this year. So, there you have it. Four great stocks that are not pure play 3D printing companies, but still rely on 3D printing to tackle important challenges in space and in the sky, as well as every step of the production chain here on the ground, from design to fulfillment. 
Keep in mind that these are all companies that are focused on changing the world in the long term. But in my opinion, these kinds of 3D printing beneficiaries are the best way to get exposure to the constant innovations being made there today. Comment below or tweet me at ticker symbol U with your thoughts on 3D printing in the short, medium, and long term. What do you think will be the next major catalyst for 3D printing companies? Do you prefer pure play 3D printing stocks or beneficiaries like the ones I just talked about? I'm excited to hear your thoughts. And if you're looking for a great platform to buy these stocks, consider going with this episode's sponsor, Public.com. Public.com is an investing social network that I feel really brings together the best of both worlds. On the investing side, public.com is free to use with no account minimum to get started, doesn't charge fees for standard trades, and allows you to buy slices of stocks for as little as $1. Also, public doesn't participate in payment for order flow, meaning they don't sell your trades to market makers or other trading firms. That's really important to me. I'm just as excited about Public's community, where I've been able to exchange investment ideas with thousands of like-minded, long-term focused investors. Public often hosts live town halls with CEOs of publicly traded companies, as well as gives creators like me tools to create and share meaningful investment content. So if you want to check out even more of my content or just want to know when I buy these kinds of stocks myself, consider joining the hundreds of people that already follow me on public.com. And whether you're looking for a new home for your own portfolio or you just want to support the channel, you can go to public.com slash ticker symbol U and you'll receive a free slice of stock worth up to $70 when you fund your account. I'll leave a link to that exclusive offer for you in the description below. That's a win-win if I've ever heard one. If that's not up your alley, but you still want to keep up to date on the best ways to invest in advanced technology, no problem. You can follow along with my $100,000 portfolio project, which I'm kicking off once this channel hits 100,000 subscribers. I'm building that portfolio from scratch to compete directly with ARK-K, ARK Invest's flagship innovation fund, which is actively managed by Kathy Wood and holds some of the very best advanced technology stocks on the market today. If you're interested in jumping on that wild ride with me, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel with all notifications turned on. That way you'll be the first to know when I come out with more coverage like this, as well as exactly what I'm putting in that portfolio each and every month. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.